to begin our mass in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Today is a memorial for Pope St. Pius X. He was a great Pope because he did a lot of reforms in the church. So let us remember and pray for the whole church that the Lord may help the church grow in everything physical and the spiritual. And so let us go to mind our sins and ask God for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who to safeguard the Catholic faith and to restore all things in Christ, filled Pope St. Pius X with heavenly wisdom and apostolic fortitude, graciously grant that, following his teaching and example, we may gain an eternal prize through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Judges. The children of Israel offended the Lord by serving the Baals, abandoning the Lord, the God of their fathers, who led them out of the land of Egypt. They followed the other gods of the various nations around them, and by their worship of these gods, provoked the Lord. Because they had thus abandoned him and served Baal, Baal and the Ashtaroth, the anger of the Lord flared up against Israel, and he delivered them over to plunderers who despoiled them. He allowed them to fall into the power of their enemies, round about whom they were no longer able to withstand. Whatever they undertook, the Lord turned into disaster for them, as in his warning he had sworn he would do, till they were in great distress. Even when the Lord raised up judges to deliver them from the power of their despoilers, they did not listen to their judges, but abandoned themselves to the worship of other gods. They were quick to stray from the way their fathers had taken and did not follow their example of obedience to the commandments of the Lord. Whenever the Lord raised up judges for them, he would be with the judge and save them from the power of their enemies as long as that judge lived. It was thus that the Lord took pity on their distressful cries of affliction under their oppressors. But when the judge died, they would relapse and do worse than their ancestors, following other gods in service and worship relinquishing none of their evil practices or stubborn conduct. The word of the Lord. Amen. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They did not exterminate the peoples as the Lord had commanded them, but mingled with the nations and learned their works. They served their idols, which became a snare for them. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. They became defiled by their works and wanton in their crimes. And the Lord grew angry with his people and abhorred his inheritance. Many times did he rescue them but they embittered him with their counsels. Yet he had regard for their affliction when he heard their cry. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Le 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, hallelujah. For there is the kingdom of heaven, hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. A young man approached Jesus and said, Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? He answered him, Why do you ask me about the good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, Keep the commandments. He asked him, Which ones? And Jesus replied, You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All of these I have observed. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this statement, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. The saying that there is a special connection, that a treasure has a special connection to the heart is true. Because the heart is the place for desire and also the place for longing. It is the place where we generate, where the will resides. And also, it is the place for focus. If you want to focus, to always, you, you need to have the connection with your heart. So all our longings, all our desires, all the decisions, some of the decisions that we make, they all come from the heart. That's why in most cases we use the symbol of the heart for love, for hate, and for all the emotions, they are connected to the heart. And I think even Jesus in all his preaching, he, he always appealed to the heart and not to the mind. And we have seen the case of this young man. I think he's similar to the first reading. The Israelites had a treasure in God. God was their treasure. But it seems like they had a blood vision about God, even though they were the chosen race. But we can see that somehow they did not treasure the presence of the Lord. That's why from time to time they will go astray. They will go and worship other gods because they didn't know what a treasure was that they had in God. And we have seen a genuine young man coming to Jesus, I think he was touched with what Jesus was preaching about. And he looked at himself, he said, I, I'm still just a young man. I also need to go into heaven. I, I need eternal life. And he goes to ask. He was genuine. He wanted really to know what to do in order to go into heaven or in order to be perfect or to have salvation. And Jesus tells him to follow the commandments and he says he has observed all the commandments listed here. I think all the commandments that are listed here are all connected to relationship, to the heart. Like, do not kill. You know, killing is an act of hate. It always comes from the heart. Love your neighbor is something that comes from your, the heart. Do not commit adultery. It's something that comes from the heart. Desires, emotions. So Jesus knew who this young man was. 
and therefore he listed the, the commandments that are related to his situation. But that young man says he observed all the commandments and he still felt that he lacked something that he needed to know. And then Jesus tells him about what indeed he lacked, possessions. He says, you have a problem with where your heart is. Seems that your heart is set on your, your possessions as on eternal life. And so for, for in order for you to have eternal life, then get rid of what is causing you not to have uh, to enter into heaven. Get rid of your possessions and then give the money to the poor. By doing so, you will be perfect. And then the other thing, you have to follow me. And we hear that uh, where your heart is or where your treasure is, the, your heart also will be. So his heart was with his possessions. He was a very rich young man. I'm sure even today, if you look al around, you see that most of the people that attend church this time mostly are parents. It is very difficult to see young people coming to church because young people want to go to place, nice places, drive nice cars, you know, visit uh, entertainment places, not to come to church and sit for minutes and pray. It's like, it is so difficult for, for us young people. We want to enjoy life. And now Jesus is saying, you should not enjoy life. Come and follow me every time. It was very difficult for him. That's why he went sad. He could not imagine giving up that life and start living a, a life of solitude. And so, where our treasure is, there, there will be our hearts. Now we can ask ourselves, where is our treasure? Is Jesus our treasure? I believe that the greatest treasure that we can have is Jesus. And having to give up everything in order to have Jesus, I think it's the greatest thing that one can do. And it generates joy and not sorrow. It brings joy into the heart, in the heart. If you have Jesus with you, if you have God with you. And so let us pray that we too can know which is our greatest treasure. Is it God or other things? And if it is not God, then we can ask ourselves what to do in order to, to enter eternal life. But Jesus already said the only way is to give up everything in order to have Jesus. And giving up everything is not only riches, but it can also be relationships. It can also be family. It can mean anything. So let us give up everything and do what Jesus has, says, has said, follow him, and also help the poor as to fulfill the commandments of love yourself as you love others, or love others as you love yourself. Let us now give our petitions before the Lord, who is our greatest treasure. For the Holy Church of God, as we bring the good news of salvation to the whole world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That all nations might live in unity and peace, learning to work together for the good of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord let us pray. For our children returning to school, for their teachers and administrators, as they begin a year full of hope and promise, let us pray to the Lord. For migrants and refugees, for all who are perceived to be different, that the boundaries among us may be broken down, let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer from chronic illness, for those who endure disease, diseases that are rare or difficult to treat, and for their caregivers and loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, and especially for Stella Tin, let us pray to the Lord. God of boundless love, you make us joyful in your house of prayer. Graciously hear these are our prayers and grant them. We make all our prayers through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Pius the tenth, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his, to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, and without, without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of mercy, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us ready to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, so we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, our most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Please join me in the communion antiphon on page 859. The good shepherd has laid down his life for the sheep. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Celebrating the memorial of Pope St. Pius, we pray, O oh Lord our God, that by the power of this heavenly table, we may be made constant in the faith and be of one accord in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. <laughs>